Howdy, everyone. All right, well, I'm back in the shop. It's finally Saturday, and I've got an opportunity to uh, do some stuff out here again. Uh, it's not like the good old COVID days when I was able to uh, work out here pretty much every day, all day long, when we were shut down. So now I'm basically just out here on weekends, which kind of blows, but uh, that's how it goes. I really miss the uh, the good old COVID days, but that's how it is, and here we are. So even though I only have basically weekends to work, um, I still don't get as much done as I would like just because, of course, there are other things that need to happen on weekends as well. So the videos have slowed down quite a bit in frequency, and uh, the amount of work getting done has slowed down quite a bit. But still, I come out here, I do what I can with what I have, and uh, we'll get this thing built and we'll get it flown. So you can see I've got a mess on my bench, and uh, that obviously is not what this video is about, but um, I've got a mess here, and I've got a mess over there on that bench, and uh, that's one thing I'll be doing today is cleaning up. I've talked about it before just a little bit. Uh, I'm kind of a neat freak, and um, I absolutely cannot stand working in, um, in and amongst trash and clutter and, and junk, so... Um, I'm a lot more productive when I keep things clean and organized, and uh, over the last couple of weekends, I've just been putting that off because I've been focusing on trying to get actual work done and uh, not so much picking up after myself. So I'll get this cleaned up and reorganized a little bit so I can think straight, and then I can move on to uh, actually getting some more avionics accomplished. So again, uh, not a ton of progress, but we are making progress. And you can see here that I've got the instrument panel back in place temporarily. I got some things hooked up temporarily. I started to um, lay out and drill out various locations for various switches and warning lights and knobs and things of that nature. This is in work, of course. This isn't done. I've got more things I need to populate. But I just got started on that, and I'd have a, uh, it's not a major screw-up, but it's it's a really irritating screw-up. So I've been working on um, my ELT, the, the orange ELT back here. That's an ACK E04, and it has the capability of uh, connecting to your GPS unit. And um, it will send out GPS coordinates if it's activated if you have it connected to a GPS unit. Now I have multiple ports on my GPS unit. I'm using a SafeFly GPS, which is not this black box, but this second box back here. It has multiple ports on it, but they're like teed together internally. So I'll have like serial port one and it will have two outputs, but it's they, they share the same connection, if you will. That way you don't have to run multiple, um, you don't have to tee into that port yourself. There are multiple connections for a single port. The problem is when you go into your EFIS and program it, even though let's just say, uh, let's just make up a number here, right? So on the back of that GPS, let's say that serial port 3 has four connections. You can connect four items to serial port 3 just as a, just as a made up scenario. You have to program the baud rate for that for that connection for for the uh, serial port three. And let's say you're running something important. Let's say that that's gonna be your navigation source for your EFIS or for both of your EFISes. So you may set that baud rate really high. So the other three connections that you plumb into that port are all going to be at the same baud rate. You can't select individual baud rates for that one port that has four connections. So that's the problem. I have, there are actually three individual ports and some of them have multiple connections, but I already have all three of those programmed at a pretty high baud rate because they do mildly important things, right? That ELT is only capable of going up to 9600. So even though I have multiple ports still open, I can't really use them for the ELT because the baud rates are already set for other things and there's a, there's a disconnect. So I don't know what I'm going to do about that at the moment, but if anybody's got suggestions, I'd love to hear them. 
So the, the screw up is while I was working on that, on that, I thought, all right, let me get the rest of this ELT connected. So I went ahead and put a hole in my instrument panel right here. And that is for your on off test box. This gets mounted in the panel. So I went ahead and of course I had the instrument panel off of the airplane and I was laying out all these different locations for switches and knobs and lights and stuff. And I went ahead and I laid this out and I obviously went ahead and cut the hole and everything was going fine and dandy. And then I put the instrument panel back on the airplane and this is what I found out. This will not fit. That's it. That's as far in as it will go. Because I completely spaced the fact that I've got my VPX back here. And you can see that that is not going to work. Now, I got lucky with these other units back here. These couple of switches and knob units back here, they fit just fine. There's, there's clearance there. And I got lucky with my USB port here but this is the only thing that I did not get lucky with so unfortunately I screwed that up I'm gonna to have to relocate this and I'm gonna to have to make some kind of a cover plate to cover up this big honking hole now the good news if you can call it that there is um, at least one warning light and I may end up having to put in another couple of lights or maybe another couple of switches but I know for an absolute fact I have to install one more warning light so I'll probably put a cover plate over all of this and put that warning light right here it's going to be kind of out of place it's going to look kind of janky perhaps but there's no way on this or any other planet I'm going to re I'm going to purchase a new instrument panel and do all this over so I'm going to take the easy way out I'm just going to put a cover plate here it's going to look stupid put something in it to, to uh, fill up this gap and uh, this will probably get located up here somewhere or maybe down the line somewhere further so that's going to be on today's agenda to make that cover plate and then relocate that uh, that little black box other than that uh, so far I haven't screwed up anything else that I'm aware of um, I got to figure out what to do with the ELT. Like I said, I got to figure out what what to do to get that uh, 9600 baud rate GPS signal to it. Um, what else? Oh, so here's another thing that I struggled with, right? the I found this out after the fact. So when I built the wings, I bought the wings with the uh, stall warning thing, right? And I went ahead and installed the stall warning mechanism in the wing and now I'm at the point where I need to install the electronics right so here's the little box the little electronic box for the stall warning this gets connected uh, somewhere up front the audio warning so I bought all that you know years ago when I when I bought the wings fast forward Last year is when I bought the EFIS. It hasn't even been a year yet. I bought the EFIS in um, March of last year. So the EFIS has its own internal um, gyros and whatnot, and it has its own stall warning that you can program. You can pick and choose at what angle. When this screen gets at a certain uh, pitch angle, it will it will alarm for a stall warning. And that um, that is coupled into your headset, so you'll hear it. So then I struggled with, well, do I want do I want both? Do I want this mechanical stall warning and an EFIS stall warning? And I decided since I've already got the mechanism in the wing, um, if I were to remove that mechanism, I'd have to do something about the hole that's in the leading edge of the wing where the actual stall warning vein comes out into the airstream. That hole would have to be plugged. The mechanism would be removed and I'd have to pull all the wires out and things like that. So I thought it might be a good idea to go ahead and have some redundancy, right? If the if the ETH is completely crapped out and for some reason, you know, I couldn't tell which way was up, at least I'd have a stall warning back up. I don't know if that's important or not, but that's the way I'm going to go. 
So I thought, all right, fine, I'll leave everything like it is and I'll go ahead and install the, the mechanical stall warning. But then I thought, well, do I want that audible tone also in my headset? And I could do that, but to do that now, I'd have to get back into my wiring and, you know, do some reconnections and, you know, take things apart and rewire stuff. And at this point, I'm tired of doing that. Um, I've messed up enough stuff and didn't think things through enough that I've had to do that multiple times already, and I'm getting kind of tired of it. So the other airplanes that I've taken my flight training in and the, the plane, the 172 that I rent, you know, just to keep current and fool around in, those stall warnings are not into the headset. They're just buzzers that are in the cockpit. So what I've elected to do this stall warning from Vans, um, it gets connected into the headset. It's got connections on it that you wire into your headset. But what I'm going to attempt to do is use um, a buzzer. So I bought these buzzers here. I got a pack of, what is this, five. Really cheap. Um, obviously, I don't need five. I only need one and maybe a spare. But I bought these off the internet and... Uh, I threw a 9-volt battery on it real quick, and it's it's definitely um, an attention getter. So I'm going to see if I can wire that to this little board. So this little um, stall warning circuit board is going to get mounted behind the instrument panel, and I'll connect that buzzer to it and see how it works. Because I don't know what the voltage is coming out of this. Um, so I don't know if this will drive a uh, an audible alarm or not, but... That's on the agenda too for this weekend. After I get the um, after I get the instrument panel recut for this guy and that cover plate put on, I'm going to focus my attention um, and see if I can't get this hooked up and see if I can't get that buzzer to to work correctly. So that's kind of where we are at the moment. We'll see how that stuff goes and. Um, I don't know if I'll have anything else to talk about between now and next weekend, but uh, if not, I'll talk to you guys next weekend. And if something happens between now and then, I'll, I'll put up another video and I'll see you then. All right. Talk to you later.